Now I am going to discuss about the gestational diabetes. Gestational diabetes is patient may not be diabetic before pregnancy. After pregnancy, because of this pregnancy related hormones, uh, increased blood sugars are noted. This is called uh, uh, gestational diabetes. There is a uh, chance of maternal and fetal complications. Maternal complications like polyhydromnios, uh, or, uh, pregnancy induced hypertension like that. In uh, uh, fetal complications, uh, they may get respiratory symptoms, birth weight is increased, birth injuries can occur like that. Regarding treatment in gestational diabetic, first we have to give the dietary modification. We have to see one week. If she won't get any uh, normal levels, the sugar, we, if we are not getting targeted levels, then we have to give the medical treatment like insulin. Now, today we are going to discuss whether diabetic is inheritable or not. This is a type 1 and type 2 diabetics, they are multifactorial, multifactorial disease because uh, there is a genetical, there is interplay between the uh, genetic factors uh, and uh, lifestyle, uh, uh, lifestyle and diet, everything. Then, uh, because of that, there is a multifactorial pathogenesis is there. That's why they are directly, they are not in inherited. Uh, one important disease is a uh, MODI, maturity onset of diabetes. This is inheritable diabetic disease, diabetes. Reason is this is a mutation in the mitochondria. So mito because of that, it is inherited. Even in identical twins also, we will not see 100% uh, inheritance. Uh, even uh, one child may be affected, one child may not be affected because even though it's a hundred percent gene, same genes are there, these are influenced by the environment, diet and other things also. Now I am going to discuss how to recognize the hypoglycemia, how to treat hypoglycemia. If any diabetic patient gets severe sweat, uh, sweatings uh, and uh, there, if there is a collapse, the next moment you have to see the blood glucose. If it is below 70, this is, uh, this is nothing but the hypoglycemia. There is a rule of 15 in treating hypoglycemia. That is, you have to give 15 grams uh, any glucose. Uh, you have to see the blood glucose levels after 15 minutes. If it is right, it's okay. Otherwise, again, you have to give 15 grams. Uh, one important thing is in hypoglycemia. Um, if you treat in a hypoglycemia proper way, um, patient um, patient get consciousness very soon. And apart from that, again, you have to check glucose even after getting normal levels. Also, you have to see the uh, one hour after one hour after um, hypoglycemia. Because thing is, because of this sulfonyl ureas, uh, most of the times patients used to take sulfonyl ureas. Because of that, hypoglycemia is persisted for 48 hours to 72 hours. Because of that, from lipid, from lipid, this drug is delivered to the circulation continuously. Because of that, its hypoglycemia is persisting. That's why, if any patient is taking sulfonyl ureas, we have to admit the patient and ch regularly check the blood sugars for 48 hours to 72 hours. If they are taking uh, insulin only. In diabetic patient may get uh, microvascular and macrovascular complications. Uh, diabetic nephropathy is a very important microvascular complication. Actually, doctors use it to see about the creatinine. Creatinine is elevated after so many years. Before getting elevated of the serum creatinine, we will see uh, there is a lot of proteinuria in the urine. That is a marker of diabetic nephropathy. Even patient may complain of pedal edema also. If you are not treating diabetic nephropathy, 
if you are not screening above the urine protein creatine ratio or urine albumin creatine ratio you may not find it in diabetic nephropathy if you are not treating in a proper way definitely they will get a, uh, massive proteinuria leads to uh, uh, ckd uh, chronic kidney disease at that stage very rapidly serum creatine levels will be increased now i am going to discuss about the follow care of the diabetic that is a how to prevent your uh, foot in your diabetic this is very important this is a there are the two components of the damage of the uh, your foot one is because of microvascular complications nerves will get damaged because of that you won't get any sensation leads to decreased uh, pain sensation because of that patient may not aware of his injuries that leads to complications local wound injuries like that second thing is directly microvascular complications decreased blood supply to the foot leads to peripheral artery disease peripheral arterial disease gangrene and wounds because of that foot may be involved how to diagnose because of uh, this uh, clinical bedside test is a one is ankle brachial index and is vibration sense because of that we can know whether food is going to affect or not and apart from that every day patient should see his food under the he has to put mirror under his food and he has to see his food uh, in the mirror whether there is any callus is there very any interdigital infections fungal infections are there any wounds are there any uh, like that we how to see your your food every day in mirror because of that you can prevent major complications